as we wind out this hour talking about the Russian invasion of Ukraine. We want to answer Lola's questions. Uh, let's start from the get-go, and I'll let you take it away. Okay. Um, she mentioned the idea of Ukraine giving food. It's not, it, Ukraine is, a, is an incredibly rich agricultural region, which provides a great deal of, of wheat, particularly mm -hmm. to the Middle East and other areas. And so there is concern that the absence of that, the, the lack of Ukrainian wheat going out, could lead to food shortages in parts of the Middle East particularly, and to an increase in the overall price of wheat and, and food all around the world, and even here in the United States. Yeah. So that's that's one. The other about why don't we go in, I mean, the, the simple answer to that is nuclear weapons. Um, that unlike other powers, both Russia and China are nuclear powers, they possess the ability to, to deploy and use nuclear weapons against the United States. And in that circumstance, the president is is reluctant, I think, to uh, uh, be willing to go after Putin in the manner we did with Saddam Hussein or with the Taliban or any of these other recent American conflicts where we were dealing with a nuclear power. Which then circles back to the concern of if we were to go in, would it start, would it start a, a World a, War, War III? Thing. Yeah, the, the problem is, I think what Lola was getting at is the frustration many Americans are going to feel with the idea that we are we seem helpless in right. this circumstance but you know during the cold war during the the period when the soviet union during that period we also stood by when uh, russia invaded hungary when it invaded czechoslovakia because we didn't feel we could uh, act in those regions too so this is not as unprecedented as it might seem interesting okay let's try to sneak in tony here tony you're gonna be our last caller of the night uh, thank you for being with us go ahead is I want to know why the professor is not mentioning any minority countries like Africa that Putin is going after. And the African nations are supporting Putin in this war. Because uh, President Trump talked bad when he was in office about the African nation, put them down derogatory and said some awful names about them. And Putin, he was listening closely and went right out to these countries. The same as Germany did. Hitler did the same thing. He went right to Africa, and if he'd have got support and the fuel he needed, he would have won the war. And the professor's not missing none of that. And Biden and Trump both have not invited no African nations into the White House since they've been in office. And I want to know why, what's the difference? And you haven't supported none of those nations when they had problems, droughts, or whatever. But when it comes down to a, uh, the white supremacy, yeah, you're going in to help them. You're going to throw out all uh, resources behind them to try to cleanse, cleanse their problems up. But people are looking. Not the people in these churches and the communities, they're watching this and they're seeing this. So you better open your eyes, uh, Mr. Professor, and see it. Quit being so biased because people are watching this right now. I want you to frame this. And okay. let everybody know. All right, Tony, let's get to it because we only have two minutes left. Uh, mm -hmm. You did mention a little of this earlier. Yeah, well, <laughs> actually, you know, a number, a number of African nations have actually taken a position against uh, Russia. Kenya, in fact, uh, argued uh, strongly against uh, the Russian invasion. So it does vary. Um, and I don't think the caller is correct because I do think a number of African leaders have actually been received in Washington in both the Trump and Biden periods. It's just the, the pandemic has made personal visits less less uh, frequent, but there have been those those um, uh, uh, meetings. Uh, what is interesting about what's going on in Africa now is, of course, the Chinese have been very active in trying to win uh, economically African nations to their side more so than Russia. Russia doesn't have as much to really offer a lot of the Chinese um, or, or the uh, African nations. Only one African nation voted with Russia in the Security Council, and that was Eritrea, which is in a battle with Ethiopia and has had Soviet arms for that. But I, I uh, would challenge some of the caller's premises. Very interesting. I've certainly learned a lot through this conversation. I thank you for being our guest once again. Mm -hmm. And I know that we would love to have you back as we continue to watch what happens between Russia and Ukraine. Oh, thank you I, very much. I do wonder, just in our last yeah. 30 seconds or so, what are you looking for next? What are you watching closely when it comes to this? Um, I'm watching closely whether um, there can be pressure from 
China, whether there'll be any sort of uh, attempt to, by Putin to have a face-saving uh, move out if he's decided mm. it's become too costly, too many troops uh, killed, and, and try to have some declare victory and pull out, uh, that sort of notion. And I'm, I'm watching for that. I don't think it's going to happen. I think, unfortunately, he is committed to winning. Mm. We will wait and see. Dr. Swartz, thank you as always. Thank you. Appreciate it. We're going to come back and I will tell you what's on tap for the rest of the week. Stay with us.